Hello everybody, my name is Jay and welcome back to my tech vault. And I apologize, I'm currently in the process of doing a big cleaning, uh, spring cleaning I guess, and so I'm kind of busy uh, with, you know, all the boxes are gone for the moment. I'm kind of fixing up a little bit, cleaning, or reorganizing, and I've got some new camera setups and stuff I'll be trying out um, for live streams and stuff like that. Um, but today we're going to talk about the difference between a thread and a processor. And if you're unfamiliar with this channel, a long, long time ago, I believe in the first month or so of doing this channel, I did a video where I talked about, you know, what the differences was. And uh, let me just be honest, I had no idea what I was talking about. And, you know, clearly I probably still don't know as much as I'd like to, and you know, I'm not going to necessarily uh, consider myself an expert. I do plan on going into computer um, engineering. Um, but I'm basically just going to give you the rundown of some very, very basic uh, what the difference is in terms of gaming, how it affects people and game, how it affects gamers, how it affects workstation users, pretty much things like that, um, and also talk about like some of the bare, bare basics of uh, what it basically means, and uh, that's what I'm going to do in this video um, because the last video I did or the original video uh, was hugely inaccurate, and I want to at least make something that's a something I'm proud of. Obviously, it's since been taken down. I took it down a while ago, just no point having it. Um, so let me go over basically the differences. So a core is a physical um, physical processor pretty much. Um, cores are basically represent the processor stacked on top of each other. As you know in the original couple of processors, it was a single core processor that ran at a certain speed and they figured out they could kind of not stack them but put them really close together and uh, they basically acted as one. Um, threads came along though when I believe Intel figured out that you could have um, the same core switch in between two tasks or two uh, imaginary, or not imaginary, two virtual um, cores. They basically had one, pro one physical core uh, switching in between, acting as two cores by running one task on one of its imaginary cores and running another task on its another imaginary core, and it would switch really fast in between, and that's how we got threads. And so, obviously there are downsides to each, especially when you have like an eight core, eight thread processor, that means each core has a dedicated virtual thread, and uh, or dedicated thread and so that that just runs those tasks and it doesn't have to switch in between and obviously that switching in between does take a performance hit especially on some uh, an IPC and things like that uh, which is basically instructions per clock um, and so basically when you know for example if you're a gamer um, and you have an option between you know getting a four core uh, four thread processor and an eight core or eight four core eight thread processor um, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Obviously, that's not something you, a four core processor isn't something we currently, I would recommend for a gamer just because there's a lot of other background tasks and stuff and now games are requiring more than four cores. Um, so that's not necessarily what I'd recommend, but basically those four cores would perform, single core would perform better uh, if you just took one of those than a single thread or core on the um, eight thread four core processor. It would perform better, obviously. So there's another little thing I'm going to explain um, about why it takes such a big hit. So for example, the threads and stuff, when you're switching in between on a threaded multi-thread processor, when those cores are you know, acting as two threads, um, the core still has the same amount of resources, basically same amount of bandwidth or access to RAM, access to other parts of the system. It has the same amount of cache, which is onboard memory that it uses to relay information back and forth. Um, the more cache, the faster the cache, all that stuff basically means the better the processor performs. And so when the processor is acting as two cores, but it only has one core's worth of um, cache, uh, access to memory, access to RAM, access to storage, it obviously won't perform the same level because it's getting starved for bandwidth. It's trying to do two, the task of two processors or two cores with only the one core's bandwidth and pro all that stuff. And so it obviously is going to get kind of starved and not be able to act the same as a core that's just got all that all the access or a single core that's got access to all that information and all the um, as the RAM bandwidth, etc. It's going to still if if it's just running one thread and it's just that core, it still can access that with you know, without any problem because it's not trying to switch in between and it's not really starved for information. So that basically ends up leaving, as I said, a processor that uh, can perform much better on a single core task or a single core um, if you took one of those cores and a processor that had a bunch of cores and threads and it was switching in between. Obviously that one would perform better. So that's why there was a big stink if you're unfamiliar with the 9700K. Um, it was a eight core processor, but it was the first i7 that never had multi-threading. And people were like, "How's it going to perform better if it has, you know, a total has a total 
all its cores and stuff is less than what was in the uh, 8700K, which had six cores but 12 threads. Uh, the 9700K had eight cores and eight threads, which still means that everyone was like, well, why is it going to perform more if it's clocked similarly and it has, you know, the eight threads when the old processor had 12? And that's just because the bandwidth was not starved on that processor and it had a lot more um, ability. It didn't have to constantly switch back and forth, so it actually could run faster. Um, and it had more cores as well. So pretty much I wanted to make this video as I said because it's you know I like to constantly be in the you know Constantly be trying to better myself and the content and sometimes that does mean redoing the content that I've done before um, Obviously most of the people now that I know have something like 3,000 some subscribers uh, Back that was back when I had like maybe 50 so you know obviously not everyone's gonna be here to watch this uh, I'm watching it again, but I think that there's a lot of value in going through and trying to make sure that you know, information is accurate, at least to my best of my knowledge. And obviously, you know, there's going to be some slight consistencies. I try to really generalize it and, uh, you know, put it in terms that anyone can understand or layman terms. But I, I like to constantly be bettering my videos and trying to make something that is, you know, important um, and something that is accurate, I guess. So thank you very much for watching. As I said, I apologize for the horrible setup situation. Um, I usually will get my boxes, I'll put all my boxes back and stuff. Um, I've got some new camera stuff. I'm really excited to do a live stream build um, because I finally got all the webcams and stuff all set up. Um, you get a lot of Getting a lot of feedback from everybody. I've been trying to make sure everything looks how I like and it looks good. Um, of course, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, of course, give it a thumbs up. As always, um, check out my channel for other cool tech-related news, videos, reviews, builds, etc. And uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.